guys, it's Hannah and welcome back to A Game of Fangs and Thrones. Now, if I sound a little bit strange, it's because my ears have uh, blocked off and I'm waiting for them to pop. Uh, but, well, if I sound a bit strange, that's why. Now, today's video, as you can probably guess by the title, is balancing the books. Now, two things I have to say. One, this is not my original idea, it is from Emma over at Drinking By My Shelf and two, she has very graciously given me permission to use this uh, format in videos so if you're not aware, the basic format of this video series is Emma is trying to get down her TBR which is something that I am also trying to do and yes, as you can see um, I did change my shelves, but I think it just looks neater uh, this way, and I can probably get more more space, which is another reason why I'm trying to get rid of my get my TBR down and also uh, keep a track of which books are coming in to the in and which books are coming are going out. Uh, but I do have a video of all of my unread books, and at the time of filming, uh, this is just physical books at the time of filming. That stood, I've got some notes here which in my bullet journal which is why I keep looking down uh, but at the time of filming that TBR video which just includes my physical TBR that stood at 121 and so obviously I'm trying to get that down I failed miserably in the first in the first month I tried this which was September um, I actually, so I started the month at 121 books, physical books on my TBR. Ended the month at 130. I can't read my own writing. 131. So I added 10 books to the TBR, but that's not the end of the story. Oh no. So, in my September wrap-up, which I did put, post a video of, if you want to see what I thought of the books I read in detail, um, I read 12 books, which did take the TB, TBR down to about 119, but I bought 22 books, which obviously brought it up. Uh, so we, we're ending the month on 132 which means I have 10 books to unhaul so I have them here um, the, and the reasons why I'm unhauling these ones are I didn't enjoy them I think there's one in oh, no it's not in this pile uh, but I didn't enjoy them or I enjoyed them but I didn't think I'll read them again or in the case of two of these books which you'll see in a minute we have duplicate copies of in the house so it doesn't make sense so it doesn't make sense to keep in duplicates when if i want to read them i can just borrow them from my sister uh, so we'll just get started now the books that we have duplicates are the witcher and blood of elves both by andrei sapowski this is the first collection of stories the bind of the Fit. Uh, which I read first, and then we have Blood of Elves, which I read as the third book, I think. Um, but I explain it all in the um, wrap-up video. But yep, and these are, are the, and I did enjoy them. The only reason, as I said, that I'm getting rid of these two is because we have duplicate copies. My sister has the entire, um, the entire series, and aside from these two, I read her copies, so there's no point keeping these two when I already have a cop when I already have copies. The next ones are books that I just didn't didn't enjoy very much. So we have Haywire by Alex Keller. This was just something I picked up from Waterstones on sale with a voucher, um, because it sounded interesting. And it, it was, I think I rated it about a three, three star. It just didn't really, didn't really do it for me. 
and then we have I'd Tell You I Love You But Then I'd Have to Kill You by Ali Carter. Now this one I did enjoy, it was a fun, fun read, you know, the, the stakes didn't feel too high and it was it was quite funny. Um, if I was younger or had started the series when I was teenager, mid-teens, I'm in my 20s now, um, I probably would have continued on with the series. And this is a charity shop copy. Um, now the next two, Men Without Women by Haruku Murakami and Girl Balancing by Helen Dunmore were recommended to me by my creative writing lecturer. Um, I did enjoy them, but I'm not gonna, not gonna reread them. Funny with short stories. I like my short stories to have a bit of magical realism, or fantasy, or in the case of one collection, I have they are all steampunk. Uh, so I did enjoy them. Did get a lot out of them, um, which was what I was after when I picked them up in the first place. But they were. They're not ones I'm going to reread, so they go, they go to the pile. The Fire Sermon by Francesca Haig. Now this was a three star read. It was fun, it was, well, I think fun is the wrong word. It was an enjoyable read, um, but I just couldn't get past the, the plot point. Um, basically with this one, if you didn't know um, it's about twins. One is alpha or perfect, the other is omega or flawed, damaged in some way. So that is a controversial topic even of itself because it does deal with disability and the idea of disability being other. Um, and these people with missing limbs, extra limbs, uh, blindness, deafness, or I don't really use this term, but defects in some way are treated as other and sent away, hidden away, but the the twist in the tale, as it were, is these twins, the Alpha and the Omega, are linked. If something happens to the, if something happens to the Omega, the Alpha feels it and vice versa. So if the Alpha gets sick, the Omega gets sick. If the Omega breaks a leg, the Alpha probably feels it. So my gripe is, if that's the case, why do you treat, why do you send these other people away, you know, these people who probably do need, you know, that extra little bit of support, that extra bit of help in their day-to-day -day lives or that, or allowances need to be made, why send them away to these worker camps and quite gruesome places if you rely on them to survive? I'm not saying lock them up. God no, uh, but why? Why do you have to separate? Why do you have to send them away in the first place? Why? Do, why can't they just stay within this family, these family settings? And why are they treated as other? Which I probably think is probably what uh, Francesca Haig was going for in the sense of the discussions that need to happen in this world and also the real world. Um, but I didn't really. I think it was expanded on enough for me to d dispend that disbelief, suspend that disbelief. And there's also mentions of a post-apocalyptic fire that these seers can um, see, they have flashbacks of, they have memories of, but again, that's not touched upon. But this is the first in a series, so it might mention there, but I don't want... I don't think I'm going to continue. And again, this was a charity shop copy. Now, the next book is the only hardcover I'm going to get rid of, and it is an Illumicrate edition. Um, so that came because it's so pretty and it is signed, so I didn't want to get rid of it. But as you can tell, my shelves are getting very, very full. So I had to be ruthless. Come on, Anna, you can be ruthless with this. And I'm going to be getting rid of. Kat Dunn's Dangerous Route Muddy. Now the cover is stunning and it and on paper it is everything I wanted in a book. You know, we have um LGP, LGT, LGBTQIA possibly, uh, but it's definitely LGBT rep in this. Um it's historical fiction in France, it's an alternative history 
almost. Uh, but basically, nothing. I didn't think anything really happened in it, and it was, and it was probably because I'm, I'm pitched. It was pitched to younger audiences, possibly. The writing was very plain, um, and I just couldn't couldn't get through it. It was a struggle to get through it. Uh, but we follow Camille LaRoche, who was a revolutionary's daughter, and she has brilliant fashion sense. Ada was her runaway lover, who had secrets of her own. Gil, or Gilliam, I think that was short for, was a deserter who didn't really have anything to do with the story. Al, an aristocrat who does have some darkness and some demons, um, that, you know, I would have enjoyed learning more about, but we don't follow him, which is a shame. Um, and they all, and their latest mission is a girl possessing dark, disturbing powers hunted by royalists and revolutionaries. And on paper, that sounds brilliant. You know, you've got found family, a ragtag bunch of... Um, outcasts who try to save all these people and on paper that sounded brilliant but and it is a gorgeous cover but not my not my ideal book um which i am a shape which i am sorry about but my sister would probably like this one um she tends to read more middle grade whereas i read young young adults and above um mostly <laughs> that's not to say i will won't read middle grade it's just it's not my my genre my area uh but yep so she's except she'll take this one and give that a go then the last two are probably well, this one is cruel by jennifer alban and i did enjoy it a girl who can weave time, but there's some sort of conspiracy around that. And I did like the reveal. Um, it's a dystopian setting as well. I did like it, and I did enjoy it. But I'm not intrigued enough. I'm not intrigued enough to pick up to pick up the sequel, which was altered. Um, it was an enjoyable read. I think I'm just a little bit. I think I just started the series a little bit too old. Uh, which is probably going to be a running theme. <laughs> but yeah, we have that. And then we have Geordie Pickles, My Sister's Keeper. Now, I did like this book. Um, I didn't, and I know there are people who absolutely adore this book, and I did up until the ending. I just felt like the ending was a bit of a, I don't want to say cop out because it was a heartbreaking ending, but it just wrapped things up too neatly for the discussions that were happening in this book. Now, if you, now I'm not going to spoil it, but I do know the movie completely twisted the ending. I haven't seen the movie either, um, but I do know the, the movie completely twisted it. But basically, if you don't know, uh, this book follows the mother Kate and her and her no, the mother Sarah, sorry, and her do, two daughters Kate and Anna. Now Kate has been diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. I think it's a rare form of leukemia, and Anna was born to save her sister, um, which does create some sort of discussion and controversy about designer children. Now I know the designer children in this aspect was to create a perfect bone match um, for bone marrow and treatments and things for Kate uh, and Anna has always lived with that. She knows why she was created. Um, sorry that's a really awful term but it's the best way I can describe that family situation and Anna doesn't really have any um, freedom or life or control over her own body and she's 13 um, yeah she's 13 and she decides that she wants to sue her parents for the rights of her own body and that part is done so beautifully you know you get every point of view even Kate and sorry even Anna 
Anna and Kate are obviously the main driving forces of this story, so you follow Anna's point of view, Kate's point of view, Sarah's point of view, and their brother. And it's all interwoven, and you also see the lawyer, who is probably the best placed um, lawyer for this particular type of case, because he has a disability of his own, and he has a service dog, which obviously any the most common uh, question he gets asked is what's a service dog for, and yeah. So there's that, um, but the ending just felt too, too clean cut. Not ex not happy exactly, uh, but just too clean cut to wrap everything up in a bow. And for this type of book, that doesn't work, and it does sort of. And I have seen discussions in other reviews where the, and I'm all for organ donation if it's the organ donor's choice or they unfortunately pass on and don't need it, uh, don't need them for themselves anymore. So I do agree with organ donation, but this book, <sighs> I don't think I'll be reading it again. It was a, an interesting reading it, and for the discussions that were raised, I think it is necessary. Um, and I did cry through it and you know, you, f you feel everything. But there's just the that ending was too wrapped up, too tight all in a bow. And I think for the discussions that were happening in this book, I don't think that that was the the right way. Um, without one, without spoiling it too much, I feel like everybody gets, everybody wins, but Anna. Um, yeah. So, and she probably would have, and you know. Anna loves Kate. Anna loves Kate. That is so totally clear. And Kate loves Anna, uh, but they all they both want they both want their autonomy over their over their own bodies to be recognised. So that part of this and the sisters' bond is so sweet, so strong. And I just don't think the ending was right because, and the whole point of this was Anna need is Anna wants to have the choice to donate, to choose what she does and doesn't donate rather than being forced to do it. Uh, which relates back to my earlier point about I'm all for organ donation as long as nobody is coerced or pressured into it. Um, and that goes for the families of the bereaved families as well. So everybody at the end of this book it feels like everybody wins but Anna. Yeah, I mean, she probably would have done it, donated anyway, uh, but yeah, I just don't like the ending. Uh, but it is a good book, and I am wanting to pick up more of Jodie Fickle's books when I see them. Um, but I'm just, they'll probably be ones I read and pass on because I don't think I'll reread. So, yeah, so that's the story of my month in books. <laughs> the, th the two other videos mentioned, just to help you um, get an idea of what I've read what I and what I bought were my September wrap-up and my September haul. So just another um, another big thank you to Emma over at Drinking By My Shelf for letting me steal this idea even if I didn't give you much of a choice by just popping on a comment one day and just outright asking it but thank you again so much um, uh, for you, those of you who don't follow Emma, I will put her channel in the description below. And yep, so just final run through of the numbers there, more for so I can keep track. Uh, but we have we started the month and this project at 121 unread physical books. I read 12, so took the number down to about 119, but had purchased 22. So that takes the number up to 131, if my maths is correct. But let's just be honest, this is all a bit of fun anyway. And, and as long as the general TBR um, comes down, we're going in the right direction. <laughs> so, yeah. 
just a note i won't be count i won't um i probably won't be counting the kindle books i read in the tbr but they will probably be counted in the hauls and books read because it because at least then i can keep a track of again what i'm buying what i'm reading and what uh, what tends to sit around so much but the whole idea is that the actual tbr comes down uh, simply because i have no space <laughs> but i'll see but that's the first hopefully in a long line of balancing my books videos inspired inspired by emma at drinking by my shelf and i'll see you in the next one bye